In this video, we will be going over the process for cleaning the bellows pump and replacement of the suction tubing. It is recommended that the bellows be cleaned and suction tubing be replaced annually. It is also recommended that chemical resistance gloves be worn during disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly processes. The bellows pump is pumping concentrated fertilizer and pH correction solution that can cause skin irritation. First, put the fur troller and monitor only. Use the up and down arrows on the right hand side of the controller and place in monitor mode only. This will keep the bellows pumps from running automatically while cleaning. Remove the suction hose from the elbows on the valve body. Disassemble the valve body in the bellows. Remove the two screws from the top of the valve body. Pull the valve body down to remove from the housing. Unscrew the valve body and bellows from the crank assembly. Unscrew the bellows from the valve body. Remove the displacement cup from the bellows. Unscrew the elbows and remove the poppet valves and O-rings from the valve body, making sure to take note on what direction they go in. Now that everything is disassembled, clean each piece with a mild detergent soap and brush. Make sure to clean the cone and seat of the poppet valve. Use a small screwdriver to push the rubber cone of the poppet valve up. Use the brush to clean the cone and the seat of the poppet valve, making sure the cone is properly aligned with the seat by pulling on the tab on the other end of the poppet valve. Reassemble the bellows, poppet valve, and elbows. The horizontal poppet valve goes in stem last, followed by the O-ring, and then the elbow is screwed on top. Note that the vertical poppet valve goes in stem first, followed by the O-ring, then the elbow is screwed on top. We can attach the bellows and the displacement cup. Make sure the O-ring is seated at the bottom of the valve body. The bellow is then screwed into the bottom of the valve body. Make sure the O-ring is seated on the displacement cup and slide the displacement cup inside the bellows. Now that the bellow and displacement cups have been attached to the valve body, the bellow can be reattached to the crank assembly. Grasp the threaded collar on the crank assembly. Being sure that the threads are not crossed, screw the crank assembly onto the bellows. Slide the valve body under the housing and attach with the screws. Repeat the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly process for each of the remaining bellows. Once all of the billows, poppet valves, and valve bodies have been cleaned and reassembled, it is time to replace the suction tubing. First, remove the suction tubing from the discharge side of the billows pump. Remove the old suction tubing from the first injection point and the top elbow of the associated billows pump. Using the old section of tubing as a guide, cut a new section of tubing to the length needed. Again, using the old section as a guide, cut a new piece of tubing in the needed spot to accommodate the check valve. There is an arrow on the check valve indicating the direction the liquid should flow through the check valve. Find the arrow and make sure it is pointing toward the injection point. If it is installed backwards, the liquid cannot flow. If the injection point barb is cracked or brittle, it is recommended that it be replaced at this time. If it is decided that the injection point barb needs to be replaced, unscrew the old barb, apply new thread sealing tape to the new injection point barb, and screw it back into the injection point manifold. Making sure the check valve is facing the correct direction, attach the new suction tube to the injection point barb. Attach the remaining sections of suction tubing to the other end of the check valve and then to the elbow on the bellows pump. Now remove the old suction tubing from the supply side of the bellows pump. Remove the weight and suction screen from the end of the old suction hose. Remove the other end of the suction hose from the supply elbow on the bellows pump. Using the old suction hose as a guide, cut a new piece of suction hose to the desired length. Reattach the new piece of suction hose to the supply elbow of the bellows pump. Clean the suction filter and weight and place the weight on the new piece of suction tubing. Attach the suction screen and place back into the concentrate tank. Repeat for the remaining bellows pumps. Mm -hmm. 
now that all of the tubing has been replaced and the bellows pumps have been cleaned, we need to check and see if the bellows pumps need to be calibrated. First, prime the A and B bellows pumps. These are the two pumps that are driven by one motor. Once primed, place each of the suction tubes into its own graduated cylinder. Fill each of the cylinders to the same volume of water. Force the controller to run a dosing cycle. This can be done by increasing the required target EC if needed, then placing the controller in control mode. Once the dosing event is complete, check the volume in the graduated cylinders. If the volume of water in both cylinders is the same, the billows pumps are pulling equal amounts and calibration is not necessary. If the amount drawn into the billows pumps are not equal, it is recommended to replace the billows displacement cups, poppet valves, and o-rings. As a temporary fix, while waiting on parts, you can adjust the stroke length to ensure proper nutrition is getting to your plants. The billows pump that is pulling the larger volume of liquid needs to have the stroke length reduced. This is done by using a Phillips head screwdriver to turn the screw counterclockwise to reduce the percent stroke length. Make small adjustments and repeat the calibration process until the billow pumps are drawing equal amounts. Again, this is a temporary fix and it is recommended to replace the billows, displacement cup, poppet valves, and o-rings. Annual maintenance to your billows pumps and suction tubing will ensure proper function for many years to come.